China trade doubts. Futures pointing to a decline this morning, a steep decline as uncertainty between the U.S. and China rises. The Chinese yuan plummeting to a point not seen in more than a decade, a move many see as a response to President Trump's planned tariffs, and a sign any trade agreement between Washington and Beijing is on hold. Joining us now, Altium Wealth Portfolio Manager, Market Strategist, Michael Lee. Good morning, Michael. What do you make of this? Is it short live, this market reaction, or are we in store for a very ugly August? Well, I can tell you that every single sell-off from a trade fear or a trade spat has been a great buying opportunity over the last 18 months or so. Uh, I see this as no different. Um, these tariffs that we put on China have had very little effect on the U.S. economy. And the, the effect they're having on, on the other side is not so much their day-to-day -day economy. It's moving the supply chain offshore. It's the stemming the flow of direct foreign investment into their country. And China is in a real structural issue. And, and devaluing their currency is only going to add gas that fire in that they need foreign currency, right? They, they are 15 percent of the world's economy, yes, less than 1% percent of international SWIFT transactions are settled in their local currency. So by devaluing their currency, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be more capital flight out of that country. So it's only going to make it worse. And when supply chain and manufacturing decisions are made on investments into China, um, if you decide to go to Vietnam or South America or even in the U.S., like that's a 10 or 15 year decision that can't be easily reversed. And you tell me now, if you're a Fortune 500 company and you think about investing in China, to have a global supply chain out of there. Are you going to pick somewhere else or are you going to pick China right now? So that is the real point of these tariffs. Um, we have not seen any impact from these tariffs on the consumer in the U.S. You guys were talking about this earlier. Consumer sentiment, consumer comfort, consumer confidence, all near 20-year highs. You look at the employment market, uh, or I'm sorry, the employment situation, the U7 got to uh, the, uh, sorry, the U6 got below, got to 7 percent, lowest level since 2000. Um, and then touching back on the tariff part of it, um, we've seen some softness in some manufacturing survey data, but we added 16,000 new manufacturing jobs last month. So I, I say these sell-offs and these spats um, are a great time to buy stocks, particularly with the 10-year Treasury at 175 and the dividend yield in the S&P 500 at 185. So I, I think, you know, we know the answers to the test. We've seen this all before. It's time to get in the market. I, know, go ahead, I, I feel like this one feels a little bit different. When the president's been threatening tariffs before, doing tariffs, it's always seemed to be more of a negotiating strategy, like it was a game of chicken, and it usually worked out for us. This feels different. This feels like we had failed conversations, there was a standoff, and now he's gone against advice and done this. So it feels different. Do you not see it that way? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I think, I, 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 not, no. Not really at all. I, and I, I think every single time this happened, we're in a little bit of uncharted territory. But I think now uh, we have the wind at our sails, right? Like, again, um, the, cons the U.S. consumer is 70 percent of our GDP. And with the data coming out that's literally the greatest uh, and the strongest since, uh, you know, since Y2K, essentially. Uh, I think we can keep going and we can keep step, stepping the pressure up. And then China devaluing their currency, it may be a temporary fix to try to inflame for slightly better negotiating tactic. But if they keep doing this, the capital flight out of their country is just going to add gas to the fire. But it's just going to make it worse for them. But let me push back on that to Lee's point. Let's talk about business investment. Business investment fell a seasonally adjusted eight tenths of one percent in the second quarter. Job growth has been softening. That we've had factory activity has fallen, I think, fat, the factory sector slowed for four straight months, ending with July. Again, that uncertainty, it's hard to quantify, but I've been talking about it literally since this trade war started. And if it impacts job growth, if it impacts investment in the United States, that is going to be ugly. And I'm going to pile on to that. The reason why the Fed um, lowered rates was to not stimulate the economy to Jack's point through the consumer, it's really through business. Right. So if business investment is off and lower rates, what caused the sell off was the Fed's action on Wednesday, not necessarily uh, Trump's tweet about tariffs. Right. So the thing that concerns me, I'm with Degan, is business investment just seems like it's waning and this doesn't help. In that yeah, well, um, 
the con argument to that was business investment was so much substantially higher in 2017 and 2018 that maybe we're due for a slight pullback. Um, and, and again, maybe job growth has slowed a little bit, but wage growth uh, year over year, I think we we're up 3.2 percent, which is the, slower than it was in February. In February, but prior to the, to the 12 months prior, from so from 17 to 18, the same time period, we we're up 2.8 percent. So it's, wage, high, it's the fastest rate in a decade, uh, uh, roughly. So, uh, 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 we're we're in really really good shape, and that consumer, okay, that fuels our economy. The savings rate is up close to eight percent. So we're having all this spending. We have all this confidence. We have a robust labor market, and the savings rate is much is literally double what it was going in the crisis. When you put together the strong consumer and manufacturing that's not so hot right now. The earnings growth, there's not a lot of earnings growth, right? So you, you say this is a buying opportunity for stocks, and I don't know that you're wrong, but, but with stocks looking you know, pretty fully priced here, where does that next leg up for the market come? Does it come because bond yields are so low that we're going to push that market up to 17, 18, 19, 20 times earnings, or does it come that we're going to have a resumption of earnings growth in some future quarter and things are going to well, take another leg up there? A couple good points here. So earnings not looking so good this year, looking a lot better next year. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but I would say earnings are almost secondary to macro sentiment. And with the consumer booming, Right. And interest rates at ultra lows like we've seen this story before. We've had periods, you know, over the last decade with these low rates where earnings haven't looked that great and stocks have done extraordinarily well because there's literally nowhere else to go. And you have the rest of the world going to negative interest rates. Like I, 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 I think, you know, I think this story has been played out on multiple fronts and you, you have a clear pathway in front of you as to what's going to happen next. So, really quickly, so there is, it's another big week for earnings. Disney, CVS, Health, Uber, and Lyft among those on tap to report. You two, Jack and Mike, what are you watching for this week? What is going to be the the big tell? Just to your point, S&P 500 earnings are ex still expected to slip six tenths of one percent, but so far 77 percent of companies in the S&P have reported it, and earnings are up 2.7 percent. I mean, 77 percent, yeah, have reported. 70